Lagos is a place of abundance and it's a place of plenty. It's a place where you have veterans across all walks of life. And so, this is not a way of insulting the intelligence and the results that this territory already commands. But then I can tell you this by the Spirit, that if you listen to the things that are about to be shared, truly, truly, your life will change. Praise the Lord. The principles of the kingdom, if and when understood, and communicated with balance and intelligence will produce oneness. So in one minute, I just like you to pray, talk to the Lord. Open my eyes. Let me see. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Shala braka to see few minutes and we're done but let it be a time more than worth it what's that song again oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god oh it chases me That's really the part that I'm, that, that I'm looking for. That, that part. There's no one who can climb up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming down to me. There's no one you won't kick down. Why you won't tear down. Coming down to me. Sing it one more time. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, line you won't tear down, coming after me. Hallelujah. We receive the miracle of open eyes, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Third John chapter 1. Third John, just one chapter. We'll read verse 2. Third John. And I'll just establish a few things and we'll pray. It's our desire to always make these conferences rich and balanced and very powerful and i pray that this will be experienced in the name of jesus please read with me it's projected one to read beloved uh-huh one more time just keep verse two yes so God speaking to, through his servant, desires our prosperity, but then he desires that we prosper even as our souls prosper. Please listen. The subject of prosperity is not about money. The subject of prosperity is a battle for your soul. You have to understand this. The subject of prosperity is a battle for time and a battle for your soul. This is what you are fighting to redeem. It is not about money. It is not about houses. It is a battle for your soul and it is a battle for time. I just need to establish this foundation. 
the most expensive thing on earth is time so says a dying man a dying man does not need a bigger property a dying man listen carefully please does not need more education a dying man does not need a contract or not a dying man needs time that means no matter what i take from you if i leave time i didn't cheat you the real way to cheat you is to take time are we together now because the unit of destiny is time you have to follow me this morning please the unit destiny is a function of time that means whatever i do to your time i'm doing to your destiny are we together it is one of the reasons why things like delay is very dangerous because delay is a system of manipulating time it is not the event you are robbed of experiencing but the time factor because everything that works on this earth is time tagged are you getting it now this is balanced sound prosperity teaching that will not latch your heart to wealth yet you will lay up wealth as gold this is not about money because the moment our idea is just about money 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 we will miss it just like a jimmy was sharing you have to look you have to look at god's mind his idea god gave man time now watch this it takes time to know god it takes time to impact a generation it takes time to be a good father it takes time to be a good husband and a wife. Are we together? It takes time to build quality relationships that matter. It takes time to know the Holy Spirit. It takes time to be there for people. And the devil found out that since every good thing is a function of time, let me find a way of number one, taking away time. And if I cannot take away time, then I waste time. Listen carefully. It is a battle for time. Everywhere Satan sees time, his attention is attracted. Why do they have time? And what is being done in that time? Please listen. Jesus was speaking and this is what he said. Are we together this morning? I must walk the works of him that sent me while there is time while it is day why for the night cometh when no man only spirits will be able to walk at that time but once you are a man with a mortal body you will not be able to walk so there is time tag i must raise my children while it is time for the night comes when i cannot raise them again i must build relationship with my aged parents while it is time a day will come i will not see mama again and satan says that time is what i want listen carefully this has nothing to do with money it is a battle of time and a battle of your soul are we together now but satan discerned the way men live on earth listen carefully that this system is economically driven are we together now that means that the way we live as far as the matters that pertain unto life in this kingdom is concerned we use the time that we have really that is the real value we have because your skill came because you had time so he takes the time and then you exchange it alongside your skill and you receive many rewards including monetary rewards so what satan found out is that since by his study of many years most men will give the greatest share of their time for money and he said that's it i found the key I, satan continued to research by himself through decades and found out that the highest amount of the time of men is invested in looking for money so he said now let me do something to that money to make you keep 
pursuing it all the days of your life. Since if, if I can kill you, best for me. But if I cannot kill you, then I will do something to your time. Poverty is not about lack of things. It's about a state where perpetually your time has been sacrificed to Satan. Let me show you three scriptures that will change your life. Proverbs chapter 22, please. Mm. God is helping us this morning in the name of Jesus. It matters how we are taught and it matters how we are mentored on the things of the spirit. The scope of our spiritual understanding We'll read verse 2 and verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 2 and verse 7. Please let's read together. One, two, read. The rich and the poor meet together. Where do they meet? In this space called the earth. And the Bible says the Lord is the maker of them all. God never made them so. He made them all. Their decisions and their understanding separated them into these cadres. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all so whether you choose to be abraham whether you choose to be lazarus whether you choose to be a rich man god still made you he did not make you that way he's the creator are we together now verse 7 is where it gets very disturbing read please one to read and the borrower is servant to the lender one more time please That means the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. The rich anything rules over the poor anything and anyone. Provided you are poor, the disadvantage of poverty is that it subjects you to a point where you no longer have control of your time. Understand this, we are dealing with time here. If I am a servant, I do not have luxury of my time again. You tell me when to wake up. That's why every time Satan wanted to stop the timing of the arrival of Jesus, he would send Israel to be slaves. So that in slavery, they did not have control over their time. Now, please watch this. There was a strategy in Egypt. There are so many things in my head lord grant grace be praying for me while you are listening to me eh? because there is a burden that a generation must offload once and for all otherwise very soon we will kill one another and eat our children was it not hunger that made two women to eat their children that that story has not stopped hunger will make even women if women eat their children, imagine what the men will do to their children. Because can a mother forget her suckling child? So by the time a mother turns her child into her meal, when you send your daughter to a marriage that should not be because of financial advantage, you eat your child. So this, this, is not, this is not the kind of teaching to choose whether you want to listen to or not. You will be selfish ignoring this teaching because you are listening for the sake of a generation and your children, born or unborn. Are we together? Genesis chapter 42. I'd like us to read the first two verses. Genesis chapter 42. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <sighs> Jesus. Let's read together. It's projected. One, two, read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, stop. Where was corn? Corn in Egypt. Egypt has always represented a place of bondage and captivity. An antichrist structure. But provided there was corn there, the prophet said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Somebody is about to send his children to captivity because of corn. Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet can die when there is no corn. 
I'm a prophet. But where we are now, there is no corn. And I've heard that there is corn in Egypt. It's not my desire to send you to a place of slavery. But hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. I heard that there was corn in Egypt. And I'm sending you to go there now. Eventually they got there. And then there arose a pharaoh that did not know Joseph. And he turned God's people into slaves. That's how they got there. While they became slaves, the privilege that was given to them was that the straw was given to them. Then they would make the bricks and the mortar. The moment Moses came to propose an exodus, this is what Pharaoh said. Is it not because you still have time to call upon your God? The remaining time we gave you to rest, you are now using it to call on God and hear that you should be free. Occupy them. Stop giving them straw. Let them use the remaining time. It's a strategy that our generation is still suffering today. The moment he sees that you still have three extra hours, he will do something to the economy to make sure the remaining time is now used to look for money. Even as your soul prospers. The world system is that you prosper even as your soul dies. I can know what economy you are operating by. Not by looking at your bank account. I look at the quality of your soul. When I see that as you rise, your soul dies. I know that you have tampered with an economy that is not from heaven. So Satan does not mind giving you money. You will get gold as dust. What he's looking for. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Profit, profit. Business now. If he gains what? The whole world and loses his soul you paid for the world with your soul like you pay for water with money the commodity of exchange is your soul when satan took jesus up the mountain they were not talking business material things bow to me just give me access to your soul and i will give you all of this that is still the strategy till today it's a battle of your soul, my brothers and my sisters. And it's a battle of time. It's not a battle of affluence. It's not a battle of pedigree and all of this. A battle. The real arch enemy of Satan is one who has both resources and a healthy soul. Because you pay the price with your soul. I found this years ago and it changed my life. That this is the mystery behind the decadence that continues to happen over people's spiritual lives. You would notice that for many people, maybe whilst on campus, they still have some little time. And then they give God everything. And suddenly things begin to change. By the time they get jobs, they hardly have time for God. And the moment, the moment the devil knows that you are hearing a, a sermon that will lift you, he can make you promoted. Satan doesn't always demote. He will do anything that will take your soul, including relocating you to a wealthy place. The idea has never been money. It's like a meter in the spirit. He looks at your life versus your time and your soul. The moment he finds out your soul is prospering, he will do something to your time. Battle of time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to lock yourself for a whole day to say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to hear you. The moment that happens, here comes the PTA letter. Everything is growing except your salary. Your needs are growing. The troubles are growing. And then you look at your PTA letter and you hold it for a long time as if you are not seeing it. And that pressure alone will make you to round up that prayer immediately. You were browsing how to know God and you didn't know when you started browsing a fast way to pay a child's school fees. Enter. Even as your soul prospers. The generation that will ignore this message is the generation that will pay for the, the price of their foolishness with their children. 
I thank God for the person who is teaching you this because most times we think people teach finance because they do not have anointing. They are trying to remedy for the frustration of not being spiritual. So they choose an area that can explain away their lack of power. It is very important to be balanced. The area of imbalance becomes the edge of Satan in a man's life. Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. Lack of resources has been the greatest basis of distraction. If I ask all of us to write our prayer request now and I have the opportunity to read it, I mean... Some will say, must I write it? I can't say it. I need money. I'm in trouble. There's uh, the time to write. I can say it. This is my problem. Listen to me. The name of Jesus, you've heard me say, is extremely heavy. It takes money to carry it. The name of Jesus is extremely heavy. It will take resources to lift up that name even as your soul prospers so he becomes a CEO and while he becomes a CEO his soul continues to go down you are buying the cars you are buying the houses but your soul continues to go down your children will follow after the backsliding state of your soul and the Bible says you did not profit in that business of destiny you lost because you gave away your soul for wealth now here's where the attack comes if you say Satan my soul belongs to God and I will prosper he will isolate you as a case study and say let me see the technology by which you will step into this system and still rise financially and then your soul will still prosper. No. Bow to me and I will give you the treasures. Or refuse to bow and I will manipulate your time and your life to a point that it will compel you to bow. Notice, they saw the ease with which Jesus was doing ministry. And they sent the scribes and the Pharisees and they didn't seem to understand him. The next set of people they sent were the tribute collectors. They sent finance people. Come and do something to his time. Embarrass him. Corrupt his message. Create a case financially against him. So that his message would not be heard. And they brought the issue of tax. Not Simon. Not you are a good man. You are changing society. We had the other day that you healed a madman. Congratulations. As the government, we are happy. Mm -mm. That was not their concern. We hear that you are doing this thing easy because you are not paying tax. You claim to come from God. You claim to be obedient, but you are violating this. And Jesus looked at them and said, Peter, go to the fish. I, I want to show you something. You will not have power over my time. I know what you are looking for. Go, go to the fish. Take his coin. Give to him. Let him go. Then he said, give to God what belongs to God. And while you are doing so, Caesar will come immediately. So make sure you prepare Caesar's own. So that as soon as Caesar comes, you give to Caesar too what belongs to Caesar. If you give to God what belongs to God, Caesar will come. The moment you start giving God time, get ready. Caesar will send the tax collectors. He will send them as increased bills. He will send them as multiplied school fees. He would send them as the need to relocate. He will send them as an angry landlord who does not know why he's angry. And he said, while you are serving God, prepare Caesar's own. Because Caesar does not hear stories. Give him his coin. He said the peacemakers are those who inherit the earth. You make peace when you settle both God and Caesar. If you settle God alone, you will not have peace. You are not a peacemaker. You must find a way of settling Caesar. Is God speaking to us today? God forbid, but imagine 
that we were in this conference now and because of a need some financial need whether for personal or whatever reason we now after preaching powerfully like this the next thing I manipulate the prophetic grace upon my life and start seeing your account and say you stand up you have seven million five hundred thousand when I prophesy like that and you are shaking, I will use the opportunity to extract Caesar's own out of your account quickly. It may not be that I'm a bad man. While I saw that account, I just remembered my child's school fees. I said, how much is there? I mean, you can quickly smuggle out money. And because you are shaking under the anointing, you would think it's the anointing that is making me do all. The anointing came, but my flesh mixed with it. Because my belly is hungry. Even Jacob goes to Egypt to find bread. When there is corn in Egypt, he can give away his sons. I made up my mind that I will never worship money. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, we will inspire a generation correctly. But to do that, you will need... Are we doing anything wrong? Help us please. You will need resources. Satan hates men who have time and money. It's like having water and fire together. Coexisting. Because he knows what you can do with time. Give a man time. He can find God. Give a backslider time. He can return to God. Give a cursed person time. He can find the cross and go back to the blessing. But once you are distracted and there is no time. Was it not because there was time? Listen, there was time. That was why the disciples were listening to Jesus. A time came when Satan started doing something. And they said, Master, we have left all. Our concerns are beginning to mount up. You are keeping quiet about this. What is our court in this? Tell us now because we've left too much and what is happening in the economy now is distracting our focus. And Jesus said, I get it. No man who has left this or that or that but you will gain this in this life. When Jesus was caught and went to the cross, the disciples were angry in John 21. Peter said, I go a fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing with my time. Before this karma called Jesus came to distract me. And the remaining disciples said, we go with you. And then they went back and they were fishing and could not catch any fish. Because Satan wanted to keep them there. For as long as you don't catch fish, you will continue. But here Jesus came. My God, Jesus inspires me. When you catch fish, you will leave the sea. But when there is no fish, you will remain there. Let me show you how Jesus solved that problem. Immediately, Jesus shows up. He says, little children, do you have any catch? Your time is being wasted there. And then he says, cast your nets to the right side. And they caught fish that there was no more need to stay there. He said, now you can come and give me your attention. I want to tell you something that is a destiny information. But I can't tell you because there is no fish in your net. Come. And then when he sat down, he now said, forget the issue of fish. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me? Now, Simon had gotten fish. He said, yeah, Lord, you know. He said, no. Feed my lamb. How will I feed when the sea is not giving me fish? It takes fish to feed his lamb. When there is fish in your house, you can feed Islam. Please hear what I'm telling you. I can tell you why there is a widespread of joblessness. It's related to the spiritual state of many young people in Nigeria. Because the moment you are a graduate and there are so, the, the burden is on you. Your father sees you praying. You say you are doing dry prayer and fasting. He will first keep quiet. One day when he gets annoyed, he will open that door while you are praying and say, I was a pastor before you were born. Don't be stupid. Go out as a young man and look for something. You will be forced to round up that prayer in the middle of a revelation that will answer a generation's question. This is not about money, my brothers and my sisters. This is about the destiny of a generation. 
as a function of time. A very wonderful man come, husband and wife. You got married, happy couples until money came. Are we together? Until what? Money issues came. Now she has twins. And the guy said he didn't plan for twins. But that doesn't change anything. Are we together now? And that's where the trouble starts. No food to eat. In-laws are calling. They now start hiding their monies from one another. Smuggling it through third-party bank accounts to reach to settle people quietly. They start suspecting one another. Stealing from one another. What a sword could not do, money did. It would tear this family into pieces. The man who started ministry with integrity and truth. When he started the ministry, they were using a mat. But now that they need a building... The budget is three billion. And he says, I can't waste this prophetic grace. First, you would follow it quietly. Just give as God helps you. Nobody's, I'm warning, give as God is, is talking to you. And they now keep quiet. Later, he says, okay. Oh. Mm. You will not see me free again. Because it looks like you people are abusing this grace. This message is a message of exemption to take us away from that which can cause a man to waste his life and waste his destiny. You can start ministry well as a pastor, but the truth is that by the time your needs get overwhelming, you will start choosing where to go. Say, so let me see how many members first and how many givers. Let me watch a video somewhere. Did they raise money? I want to be sure of what, because I'm leaving my wife and my children. I'm hoping that this is the ministration that will bring my child's school fees. Then the day you get there, rain falls and people don't come. And you are angry while you are preaching and people don't know why, because you've calculated it. Look, let, let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. If it is God you want to serve, you will not serve him carelessly. You serve God with intelligence. There are things that must be settled to allow you the time to worship God. Are we together? You always hear me say it. That people go to pray and spend six hours. You think they are crying for souls. You think in the prayer they are having encounters. They are worrying. 80% of the time they are on the ground thinking. Just because they are not out for you to see, you can think that they've spent six hours praying. Lord, why is my life like this? Is this how, will I serve you and die this way? Is this how everything about my life is going to be? And while that is happening, Satan will manipulate someone to send the text to say, I'm sorry I didn't want to tell you, but I need to tell you. I've watched your life and this your serving God is a shame. The devil will use it and add. You see, you see God, you see what I'm saying? Now it's a shame. They say it's a shame. And you will get up with a negative conclusion that as far as me and God. Have you seen people who will tell you, I used to do this. Don't, if it's tongues, I prayed in tongues. More. Don't even bring that issue. Night vigil. I started my night vigil from four till... They will tell you that. Say yours that you are doing just 9 to 2. Is that vigil? I prayed from 9 to 2. Where is the God? Our children will not go into slavery. Because of hunger. Are we blessed? Yes. That you can lock your house with your wife and children. And say this week we are spending time with God. And when Caesar comes, you say, Caesar, I won't open the gate. Check somewhere there. There are fishes. Pick your coin and go back. Caesar will always go back when there is coins. The strength of Caesar is when there is no coin. He will harass you. Just when you want to worship God, some people from your village will just come in a van that they came to greet you. They say, we've heard about what God is doing and we, we, we just came to spend time. And now you are in a tight corner because you have to honor them. 
the budget already is running into something that will stop your prayer how will I call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how will I bow my knees before you and then bow down before a man no way no way because you listen very carefully the Bible says Jesus is speaking and he gave a parable he said the kingdom of God is likened to a man having a pearl a precious pearl and that it fell somewhere in darkness and the first thing that man did was to find a candle to find what to recover the, the treasure you need two things a candle and a broom he said he got a candle, lit that candle and began to sweep that room. Wherever that pearl is, you must come out to sweep the room. And the moment it came, he found it. So when you find out that something is not in your life, you need light. The light of God, exact spiritual illumination not just a random communication of truth there is an exact body of truth allocated for the financial blessing of the saints it's a body of knowledge that can be exhausted it's not random the truths of scripture will not cover for themselves randomly no you are you can be blessed and anointed and heal the sick and still be poor because the truths do not replace they complement so the presence of one truth will not automatically solve the problem of another. Truths are like the buildings, the rooms in a house. You always hear me give this example. I can have two keys out of ten rooms. I may have the key to the restroom. If I want to ease myself, then fortunate for me, I have the key. But if I do not have the key to the kitchen and I'm hungry, the key to the restroom will do me no good. I will hold the key to the restroom. I have a key, but not the key allocated for the kitchen. And there are times you open these keys in different ways. There are some you turn three times. There are others you turn a padlock. There are others you have to open a lock. You have to know the key that opens the room that you desire. You are my God. A generation can be blessed and still passionate about God we were not designed to choose no to choose whether you want to be wealthy or spiritual that choice was given by religion not God are we blessed please you can reject poverty from a carnal sensual materialistic standpoint I hate poverty I hate poverty because there is already lost there are we together now and so your your hatred is is a derivative of lost not understanding but you can genuinely hate poverty because of the effect you have seen it cause your life and the kingdom there are many of you today you got books from the throne that are supposed to go to the nations but this God of mammon stamped your impact and kept it at a level you said God told you that this material should reach the nations there are people who have died today and it's money that killed them 
There are people who die today. It's poverty that killed them. Poverty is a spirit. It can kill. There are people in marriages today that should not be. Poverty held them like an usher directs you to a seat. And says, sit here. I redirect your destiny. Not by a discussion. I use hunger to take you away from the will of God. Are we together? Now let me share with us two keys. Do we still have time for two of them? We thank you, O oh God, for giving us understanding. It is understanding that sets men free. The entrance of thy word giveth light. And then it gives understanding to the simple. So the next time you see poverty, remember time. Don't remember ego. Don't remember they will say I'm not succeeding. Leave all that one. Time. My destiny is suffering right now. Because there's no, there's no money. The health of your marriage, your relationship, your children. There are children who have been delayed today by poverty. Poverty chose that you will not go to school for the next four years. And they remain there. And let me tell you this. It is dangerous to prosper alone. It's the same thing as being poor. If all the brothers of Joseph had the same dream, Joseph would not go to prison. But because one over 12, one over, yes, one over 12 had a dream, the 11 said, so what are we? In Nigeria today, the average man, no matter how greedy and wicked you are, there are at least four people praying that you rise so that they can eat. Are we together? So the issue of your need being met does not mean the problem has been solved. Your wealth must be transgenerational for you to really rest. Enough to pay for every argument that can come. Enough to pay for the conflict no matter the wickedness, the jealousy, the, the contentions. No matter how many people Caesar sends, they can all go back with their gold and let you focus on the things of God this is my desire now guys this is what will happen for every step I take you come closer to me watch this I don't see this 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 is too burdensome to change them to chase them one by one the things I need are too many if I use my time to change them I will die chasing them so God created a magnetic system watch this as I grow they come as I grow, they come. If I backslide in my understanding, they go back. Watch this. This is a technology of success. While I'm standing here, where will I ever meet a media man to interview me? If I go around looking for media people, that can take my lifetime. So God said, don't worry. It is settled in your growth. Your assignment is that as I grow, so while I'm praying, shakatakata kalikatabara, this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit. While I'm reading a book and saying in the name of Jesus, this is what is happening. Now, because you cannot see it, does not mean it is not happening. This is how you came yesterday. By this morning, this is where you are now. That you are not aware of. Don't be deceived by what is not in your pocket, my brothers and my sisters. It is a law backed up by God's integrity. This is how we rise in this kingdom. We never seek success. We stay and dream with God. We stay and dream with the spirit of wisdom. Listen, he said, as it was in the days of my youth. Please give me Job 29 verse 1. Let me show you the way of the ancient. The way that gives peace. The way that will cause you to lay up treasure. 
as dust. Moreover, Job continued in his parable and said, verse 2, all that I wear in the months past, listen, as in the days when God preserved me, listen to the first miracle, when his candle shine where? There is a candle that shines on your path, but there is a candle that shines on your head. It first starts on your head. You have received the one on your path. Have you received the candle that shines on your head? And when by his light I walk through darkness, verse 4, it says, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets, this is more than ideas. This is more than a company. A company is a child of this mystery. When the secrets of God were upon my tabernacle, as a result, next verse, verse 5, it says, the Almighty was with me. My children were about me, I had six. I washed my steps with butter. The rock poured out rivers of oil. Read on, please. It says, when I went to the gate, I prepared my seat in the street. Uh-huh. Now, listen to this. The young men saw me and they hid themselves because they said, you are not a man. By what mystery do you rise and feed both the vicissitudes of life? It says the aged arose. Old men don't rise up for a small child. But because of the dexterity of my result, the old, they got up and stood. Next verse. The princes refrained and laid their hands on their mouth. No comments. Verse 10. And then we'll stop there. And the nobles held their peace. Their tongues cleaved to the fruit of their mouth. Why? Because his light shined upon my head. There is a spirit Job said in man. And he says the inspiration of the almighty can make any man from any background. But under any condition. Listen. Listen to me. Please stand back all of you. The problem is never joblessness. Please find a way of believing me. Your job has been coming, but it didn't find you. The version of you your job is looking for, it has not found. The prayer is not the prayer for a job. Help those under the anointing. Please hear me. Outside, online, inside. You will always attract the dimensions that reflect your transition. Always. Listen, this force is like gravity. It will push any situation till you come out. These that you learned this morning are not cunningly devised fables. No. History is full of men that rose. Please help that person under the anointing. Under any kind of situation. It is not where you are coming from. It is not all of those. It is the understanding. Of the systems the methodologies of the kingdom by his light upon your mind why is my church not growing I know the reason your church is reflecting your understanding it will grow and plateau where you stop listen watch this is the reason why if your mind can only receive 10,000 and I give you one million. Your mind will fight that one million till it gets back to 10,000 and it will stop there. It's a law. It's not a suggestion. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Listen. So while you are in your one room, instead of faking a cloth and faking a life and going to a restaurant and eating only once there for the rest of your life while joseph was in prison his mind went to check pharaoh's throne and said i can come here and the mind went back to the prison and carried the body of joseph and brought him there while hadassah listen the version of Hadassah the king wanted 
was not yet ready for the king. So when they called Hadassah, Hadassah did not go to the palace. She stayed with Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgin, for one year until she became the version the king wanted in one night. It is a training that takes time. The manifestation works like a charm. You can sleep overnight and wake up changed. Listen, listen. Many people will say they came from nowhere. There is no man that comes from nowhere. It's a lie. There is no man that comes from nowhere. I can show you the dark days of many great men when only their minds could dare go to their future. That, that you who is standing here now, your mind already went to the crusade ground since last year. Watch your body go there. No charm, no divination will stop it. Your mind already handled the healing anointing. You saw it already in your dreams. You saw it in the visions. Listen. It is true that as it is now in Lagos, you don't even have a permanent place to stay. You just beg from house to house. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Let me tell you the truth. If your mind, your mind can go anywhere, even in the island, it will create your space. Push any other house left and right and leave it for you there. There are many things today that God has brought to my life that looked for me for many years but never found the version of me they were looking for. I tried to hold it and it looked like it would never get there. And I said, do you know what? The formula is not to seek you. When you grow. Remember this example again. Watch this. This is you. This is you growing. Growing. In prayer. In study. In mentorship. Trial and error. While you are failing. And then one day. There is a season called the season of appearing. It says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. That is the realm where no charm and no divination can stop. That is the realm where even Satan cannot stop you. It will do... Have you not read in your Bible that when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, he turned it in a way and a manner that we were like them that dream. Please hear me. Listen to what I'm telling you. Just carry that contract. Carry that certificate paper. Take it back to your room. Don't make a fool of yourself. Go and drop it in that room. And stay with God. What is the key that opens this door? While you are doing that. You will have to depend on someone for your lunch or dinner. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Why fake what can be real? Apostle, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be my friend. It's not true. The version of you they are looking for does not exist. But when you stay and find out the principles of friendship, and begin to grow in virtue. Virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. The moment you build it, you become Beulah and Hephzibah. A delight. Music artists, minimize going to the studio and sit down. Go to the studio in your mind. Dream with God. He will give you one song, one, one, by the Spirit. You will receive that song. That song will give you a visa. That song will stand you before kings. And you look around and say, what am I looking for here? Chasing everything one by one. You will spend your lifetime 
and you will never have it. I cannot come and look for fame. Isolate fame and say, I want you. Isolate a celebrity life. I want you. Isolate a healthy bank account. That's strange. God already saved you that burden. Because you don't even know all what you need. When you pass a magnet on sand, all the metals there, provided there are nails, imagine picking them one by one. So you bring it and pass it slowly. If you pass it fast, you will miss some. That's why God is taking you slowly. Listen. In physics, a metal that is not magnetic can be made to be magnetic. Just like you are not attracting anything and you can stay with this magnet called the Holy Ghost. Aye. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may be in a hut looking at your aged mother, looking at your aged father, and they laugh at you and say, shame on you. You were born again 35 years old. Don't worry. Dream with God. Let the candle of the Lord come upon your mind and you begin to grow. The, the ministry influence. Very soon your past will hate you so much it will leave you. Your past will leave you into your future. Listen. This is the mystery behind the unfair lifting of many people. You will look at them and look at their persona and get angry and say but this man should not be the ceo and even him you will say it's true you are right except that the law does not fail irrefutable bound by god's integrity there's no parliament on earth that supervises the law righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne let me submit to you and I say it sincerely and with all humility. When we were nothing, the Holy Spirit took our minds to these days. We dreamt with him. And it says, son, walk that garden. See it. And our bodies were there. That's when I found out that you don't need your body to arrive. That's when I found out that your mind is also a prayer warrior. That while your mouth is praying, your mind too is praying. The Bible says God will do all we ask or think. Not ask and think. Your mouth can say God bless me and your mind will say don't answer again. It's alright. God can answer both requests. So I found out that what my mouth was praying. My mind was asking God to forget about it. And then my mind and my mouth had a discussion. And they found out that one was older than the other. And I said, you know what? Mind, in this case, you are a younger brother. And there are all kinds of nonsense. You must excel in light. And I decided to give myself a time of real silence. Jesus, for 18 years, nobody knows what happened to him. From age 12, Jesus went into hiding. The next time we see Jesus... He comes at age 30 and John looks at him and said, that's right, that's him. That's him. Behold the lamb. There were many people on the crusade ground of John, but their minds were in their villages, Capernaum, everywhere, and they stood there. But when one man came, he said, behold the lamb. He was driven to the wilderness. He came out and it was noised abroad. Who did it? We don't know. It was noised abroad. I say this respectfully and with all humility. A lot of people see the things that God is doing, especially through my life, and they think it's a mistake. Submit to you that it's done with intelligence. It can be reproduced again. I found out that the key to impacting a generation is to find the age range and grow with generation. When we started, it looked like we we're just doing young men who cannot prosper you. Will I be stupid to go and mentor the generation of our mothers and fathers? No matter who I heal, if I speak and Papa Adeboe begins to speak, they will listen to him. They love me, but they will say, I'll talk to you later. As anointed as I am, because that's not the generation of my influence. 
Any generation that you don't participate in their growth, you will not be featured in their greatness. You will not evolve from somewhere and tell a generation to honor you. No. That's why I told you timing matters. There are people who have already missed a generation. Already. No matter what kind of anointing, the generation will not attest to you as a voice that they will listen to. Because you don't have a place in their history. Papa Iya Debohe and these great fathers of faith grew with our fathers and their mothers. They, can, they could relate to their impact in their growth process. So today, no matter who rises, it doesn't matter whether you are greater or less than, that is the voice approved to represent the face of God for a generation. That's what Ejimi was trying to say when he was up here. Whose face is this? You better look for what this generation must know you for and start branding your impact specifically. A day will come, you will call people and say, you mean you are not aware I'm there? They say, well, I checked my history and your face was not there. So keep serving God will support as time allows. But there are faces and voices. It will take a long time your life will be scrutinized and vetted. But once a generation approves you, it's done. It's like a visa. They stamp it there and no devil from hell. It's a painful process. But it's how you enter your Sabbath. Billy Graham became the face to a generation till he died. And even the presidents, as hedonistic as some of them were, the only preacher that was allowed to preach in North Korea... It was not because they believed in God. How could you deny a system like that? When God was showing us these secrets, there was nothing comely to be desired. There's no shame in it. You see, I say this because I want to inspire a generation. For those of you who believe people were just lucky, aided by some, no, no, sir. No, sir. The key is this. While I was here, Look at you here. You didn't know me. But I was here. Yet you were looking for me. But not this version of me. Imagine if I had to look for you. Imagine if I had to look for New Heritage Baptists. Imagine if I had to look for our mothers. Imagine if I had to look for some of you who continue to promote our teachings on YouTube. Think the difficulty. And so God said that's not the way. For step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days. For step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days. I wish I had time. You know, you won't believe I've not even touched what I wanted to say. I wanted to teach you on the law of relationships and the law of honor. These two spiritual laws. We thank God and we know God will help us. This is a world of men. It's not enough to know God. You must know men. <laughs> if God says yes, and a man on earth says no. The answer is no. I know you will not believe me. When you talk about the sovereignty of God in terms of his exclusivity, yes, he can open a door that no man can shut. But you have to realize that in this kingdom, all blessings come from God through men to men. Say it after me. From God through men to men. God leaves men by using men satan brings men down by using men so what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him david knew god but he didn't know samuel he remained in the wilderness david needed to know both god and samuel to come out of the wilderness joseph knew god but he did not know pharaoh and he remained in the wilderness 
it was Pharaoh that sent for him. God already sent for him since. But because Pharaoh refused, he remained in the prison. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus was the son of God, but he didn't know John. And he remained the Nazarene. Until he met John, he became the Christ. You are Christ, the son of the living God. Who hates you in this kingdom does not matter. But who likes you matters. Yes, sir. There are people who are not castable. You can't cast them out. When God wants to help you, he will make you to be at peace with them. They are gatekeepers approved by God, including Cyrus. They are the kinds that when a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make those sets of enemies. You can't pray them away. You can't bind them. They are gatekeepers. God will have to touch their hearts to open the gates for you. Is God speaking to us? These are the systems of the kingdom. Please listen to my message that I preached at the king's court. If you can get it, the king's court. Some of their people, wonderful members are here. And, and the women, the women conference. I taught there on the life of Esther. Look for it. I'm sure it's online. There are many wonderful sites here. Some of you are here. And please listen to the law of honor. Esther honored her man to death. Honor is a weapon that can kill. A woman in that scripture never used a knife. There was everything in the palace. But dishonor was about to separate the palace into two. The chariots were still there. The knights were still there. The throne was still there. But one woman's dishonor was about to divide 127 provinces. And the elders came and said, no, do something to this woman. In that teaching, I show how you can transit from Shushan to the palace. A young village girl who was given a chance by a man called Mordecai. And that young lady accents her way to be in. She never fights. Yes, she defeats. She never killed, yet she displaced. When her man was there, she used honor to kill her man. Honor does not only lift. You can use honor to bring enemies down. She invited the king for a banquet and invited her man to. It didn't make sense. A man was honoring his death sentence. And the queen waited until it got to the feast of wines. And then she now said, I have a request. Someone is threatening the queen and my people. And the king said, who? Because it takes wine for certain requests to be answered. And then, when she honored that, he said, this man, her man. And all of a sudden, ah, my God. The king one night could not sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. Because you see, it's a spiritual law that every time you help a man rise, you should never be small. Mordecai preserved the king's honor. And the book of remembrance recorded it, but he was not lifted. The law started fighting the king's sleep. This is scripture. The king could not sleep. It was not a demonic attack. No spirit was casted like Saul. No. The king said, bring me the chronicles. When he began to flip, he got to the place of Mordecai. He said, who is in the palace? And Haman came. He said, what should be done for such a man? And Haman finished designing another man's future. He said, go and do the same thing for Haman. Watch this. When Haman went to tell his wife, the wife said, who are you fighting? He said, a Jew. He said, your doom has come. Your doom. 
You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. You are. has gone forth from my mouth. These are ordinances backed up by God's own integrity. Her man was hung in the gallows. Mordecai became lifted. Esther became queen. No sword. Sometimes you don't need a sword. You need laws. And they will tame down every enemy. The law of honor is one of the most powerful spiritual laws I've learned. Second only to the law of encounter. You can honor your way to any realm. You can honor your way to any dimension. The pride of our generation is why we don't rise. We always discern in the flesh. Everything it is looking for you. One encounter with the light of God can turn your life around. It is true. One man can speak over you and say, look, I like you. Give him a job. They will give you a job that your one year's wage now becomes your monthly wage. And he says, give him an allowance. Remember you saw in your dream 10 years ago that you had the job but because you did not find the man who will fulfill that prophecy, God continued to look like a liar. It takes the spirit and the bride for the word to come. The spirit said, come. The bride too must say, come for the word to come. If the spirit says, come, and the bride says, go, the word will not come. It took both Mary and the Holy Spirit for Jesus to arrive. The Holy Ghost kept hovering around earth, waiting, looking for wombs. When he finally won, said, Mother, she said, Be it unto me according to your word. Jesus arrived. Otherwise, he would have remained spirit, the word, the logos in the realm of the spirit. It was the word became flesh because of the spirit and the bride. The spirit has said yes. Can the bride say yes? You must know the systems that will compel life to say yes. Our time is gone. We are going to pray. I hope that you were able to get something. These are the systems of the kingdom. You can play life like a chess when you understand these truths. Otherwise, we can shadow box and get. The real authority of a believer is in the quality of your spiritual enlightenment. Then the relationships that come in honor of that enlightened state and then the grace that is upon you. These are the three things that distinguish men. When a man wants to reproduce himself, the first thing you will reproduce is your spiritual understanding. The second thing is you will expose that individual to the relationships at that level. The third thing is he becomes a partaker of that same grace. When these three things happen, you have reproduced yourself. Jesus followed that formula. I don't have time. Number one, he started by mentoring them, giving them what we call the Beatitudes, the principles of the kingdom. Then, watch this. He introduced them in John 16, 14, 15, 16, a relationship with the Holy Spirit as the ultimate reason for his success. He said, now that I've taught you on certain matters of the kingdom, let me introduce you to a personality. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He said, and then at the end of it, in Acts chapter 1, he said, you shall receive. These three things brought Jesus into the apostles. It is how to mentor a generation. You enlighten them and construct their belief systems by the power of the Holy Spirit. To resonate to the dimension that reflects the character and the mind of Christ. 
Then number two, you introduce them to the human structures. They must understand the world of men. You will never rise if you do not understand men. Please listen to my message, understanding men, mastering relationships. There are ethics of relationships you must learn. For instance, all men are men. It's a revelation that will save you from heartache. All men are men. So the vulnerabilities of men does not come as a surprise because you have already been pre-informed that the best of a man is a man. Out together. And then number two, that God stores his possibilities in men. The vessels in 2 Kings 4 is not just a jar. It is the earthen vessel. That treasure. When you pray and God is about to answer you, look out for the men that come. That's the answer coming. The favor is in men. They may not speak intelligently. It was not their words you were to receive. It was what was on them. So the village mother can come and say, I cannot speak English. I don't know why I came to you. If you are discerning, you will know that it's not education you should get from her. Like our mothers now. Some of you received something from our mothers. The evening session is going to be a miracle service. But you'll be surprised that no matter what it is that you receive, it's not the same thing you had received there. Some of you, just from what you received, you receive peace for your marriage. You see that? Some of you received a grace that cured infertility. That was already pre-programmed in your future that you were not aware just by a simple prayer. The mouth is like a tap. It allows the river to flow. Hold the hands of someone. We have to close. Please hold the hands of someone. Outside, hold the hands of someone. It's time for us to leave this level. It's time for us to leave this level. While you are holding that person's hand, in one minute you are going to pray for that person. God, you are the lifter of men. It's time for you, oh God, to lift my brother, my sister. You are married, pray for your wife. Pray for your family. Pray for your company. Please pray. You are the lifter. Please pray. You are Yahweh. Not far. Oh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, the Lifter, Omega. You are Yahweh, Lifter. Oh, has come. Oh, your eyes has come. Oh.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. Please don't be tired. We are rounding up already. You are going to pray and make a declaration that this dimension, I'm tired of you. I've come past this realm long enough. It's time to turn northwards. Lift your voice. Financially speaking, I've encompassed this realm up today, down tomorrow. I have today, tomorrow I do not have. Worry about finance day and night. Lord, there is a way. There has to be a way. I'm tired of my soul going down so that I can prosper. I want to prosper as my soul prospers. I want to have the time. Lekete baruka to sheprekata. Pray. Our time is gone, but pray. Kadun shalapos. Embreketo ske baruta ske ne baruta sebuka. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise, not as unwise. Then it tells you how to do it. It says when you redeem your time, whatever redeems your time is wisdom. Why? Because the days are evil. The evil of the days is what it will do to your time. And so it says be wise. Focus on time redemption. That means focus on favor. Focus on mercy. Focus on value. Focus on relationships. These are the time redemption systems. Lift your voice and pray them. Lord, the intelligence that will bring favor. The intelligence that will multiply my value. The intelligence that will introduce relationships to redeem time. Time is already against me. I'm only one of 12 siblings. Let understanding bail me out. Let understanding bail my family. Let understanding bail my business. Let understanding bail my ministry. In the baruta skabaruta I redeem the time. I don't leave the destiny of a fool. I redeem the time. I will not spend my life chasing money, looking for money. I will not spend my life being rich at the expense of my soul, compromising on my integrity for money. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. We're wrapping up. Fire will burn in this place this evening. There is, there is a very serious, there is a very serious work. I sense in my spirit that there will truly be an outpouring of graces and very strange mantles upon people this evening listen i know you have come some of you for young and yielded year after year but let me just give you some instructions number one please spiritualize your mentality don't, don't be roaming around after service just laughing around no 
be calm and let your spirit be intact. If you will need to invite other people, I know that there's, there's, there's constraint of space, but please, there are people you know that need to carry some graces. Tell them, please, whatever price you can pay, humble yourself. You don't receive from life at your terms. You submit yourself to the conditions. Praise the Lord. There are many of you, the things you saw in your dreams are about to happen this night. You saw them already. Praise the Lord. So let me request, please, feel free to call your loved ones. And I know there are people following from whatever nation. Um, find a way there should be a link for them to submit their prayer request. If we can make that happen, that would be a good thing. I don't know whether, I, I'm, I'm sure there should be a way. Please come this evening with whatever it is that must live your life. And agree for your loved ones. Agree for your loved ones. You can stand in for your loved ones. They may not be able to make it. Whoever you know who cannot make it can send you an SMS. Please do well to copy it down. Let's see whether God lost his power. This night, I tell you the truth by the God of heaven that these Egyptians you see, that everything that has defied the God of heaven over your life, this place tonight will be a place where God is going to settle people's destinies once and for all. And please hear me. In writing, don't let doubt and unbelief stop you from writing what should be written. Because there are things you want to write and you just, ah, can God make a, a wilderness, a water? No. Cast the spirit of fear and write it down. Who said your family cannot move into their own apartment before Christmas? Who said you yourself cannot move? Provided your faith agrees, write it. Write it. Situations that only God can turn around. Please write it. Let's bring it before the God of heaven. And watch God arise as a mighty man. We've been feasting on the mysteries of the spirit. And let's allow God to now talk to. We've been talking through him. But let him talk himself. Are we together? There are some of you like Saul. You left your house for this conference. Coming as a weak person who is just passionate about God. But a prophet with fire is returning back. A prophetess in the order of Deborah is returning back. I'm not saying this to entertain you. Look, this night should not be the night you come and quarrel and fight for space. Reject any spirit of anger. Even if you have to sit on the roof, sit quietly with your heart open. Just obey the ushers. We'll do our best to make sure that we maximize the space within, without. Whether you are outside, it doesn't matter. You don't have to fight for space here. The power of God will reach you anywhere and any nation. Are we in agreement on that? Yes. So please make sure you come. And then let me advise, um, we'll be praying for the sick too. So if you are coming with sick people, please as much as possible, make sure that you receive guidance so that, um, especially for people who are asthmatic and all of that, so that you are careful and then um, we don't have any health concerns. If there is a need to talk to the people on any health concerns, the Lord will touch them, but make sure that they are guided so that we don't have any casualties. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We honor you for this privilege that you have provided. We pray that tonight Jesus will be lifted. Thank you for granting us the stamina to tarry this long and to learn. Our results will justify this time. We bless you, O oh God, and we thank you as a people and as a generation because you will visit us yet again tonight. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.